we have a cylindrical conductor. So in the, on the inside, we have a cylinder with radius A. And on the outside, we have a thin cylindrical shell with a radius B. <clears throat> we have a positive charge on the inner cylinder and a negative charge, big negative BQ, on the outer thin cylindrical shell. So we have a long cylinder running this way. <clears throat> And our goal is to figure out the capacitance of this cylindrical conductor. Capacitance. The equation for capacitance, please. Gary. Q over V. Q over V. Q over V. Check it. Delta V. Delta V. The charge over the electric potential difference, that delta. Let's drop the delta. Okay. So charge is just going to be positive Q. Electric potential difference. We need to figure out what the electric potential difference is. Electric potential difference, please. Uh, notice this is going to be the potential at B minus the potential at A is going to be equal to Sarah Jane Jones. Mm. Negative ED. <coughs> ah, it is not equal to negative E times D. It's important to understand why it's not in this particular case. Okay? It is in some cases, it's not in this case. Why is the electric potential difference not equal to negative E D? Potter up. It's not a constant. It's not a constant electric field. This is true in a constant electric field, but this is not a constant electric field. We know there is an electric field that is going in this direction. <coughs> but it's not constant. Okay, so what then is the electric uh, potential difference equal to, please? Go ahead. Oh, I just have a question. Yeah. Does the charge on the outside show? <coughs> negative Q. So we have positive Q. A capacitor always has positive charge on one, negative charge on the other, and they're E. <coughs> so so the, uh, how do you know the charge is like Q and not 2Q? Because that's how we've defined it. Is, is Q just a variable? Or like, I mean, but why is, if one is positive Q and one is negative Q, is it like the change of Q and like 2Q? <coughs> By definition, a capacitor always has a positive charge on one and a negative charge on the other, and they are equal and opposite charge. Okay. Electric potential difference. <coughs> Travis, um, how many coordinates do you have? Do you have to have all these memorized? Electric potential difference, please. Eric. Is it a negative integral from A to B, E dot ds? I'm going to put E dot dr in this particular case because we're, we're talking about a radial component here. <coughs> so E dot dr. I agree with that. So, so far, we're trying to figure out the capacitance. We determined that we need the electric potential difference. So we wrote down the equation for the electric potential difference. We have discovered by writing down the equation for the electric potential difference, we need the electric field that exists inside here in order to figure out the electric field what are we going to do here? We are going to, use, going to use Gauss's law and draw a Gaussian surface. Uh, Sierra, what is Gauss's law? Oh, um, uh, it's closed loop, uh, it's closed surface integral of B. No, 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 no. E. This is all equal to the left hand side. Um, is it oh, uh, electric flux? The electric flux, it's great. So we have Gauss's law. What is the shape of a Gaussian surface we are going to draw, please? Left. It is not going to be a sphere. If this were a sphere, we would be drawing a sphere as our Gaussian surface. But we are not going to draw a sphere. What is the shape of the Gaussian surface we're going to draw? Say again? Thank you. Okay, so let's, let's back up. We don't know the shape, fine. 
So let's come back over here. What do we need this to work out? What, we pick the shape so that what works out on the left hand side? So please, John. Theta equals nine. Uh, zero. Theta equals zero or 90 degrees, right? Zero or 90 degrees, what else? The electric field needs to be constant. Okay. So we need to pick a shape where the angle between the area vector and the electric field will either be 90 degrees or zero, and where the electric field will be constant on that surface. Okay. It's going to be a cylinder. So we're going to pick a Gaussian surface, which is going to be a cylinder that looks like this with a radius off. So it's going to be oriented like that. So we have now our Gaussian, ooh, red and orange. So we have our Gaussian surface, which is a cylinder. <laughs> okay, walk me through Gauss's law. Start with the left hand side, please. Miss, yeah. Um, well, dA dA equals dA cosine theta. Okay, so on the left hand side, we're going to have E dA cosine theta. Between what and what? Between like the electric field and the area of the Okay. Gotta be careful. That's between the area vector for the side, right? For the side of the Gaussian surface, the angle is zero degrees. What about for the top and the bottom? Okay. Um, 90 degrees. The, the angle is 90 degrees. Therefore, the cosine of 90 for the top and side is equal to zero. There, I'm sorry, the top and bottom is equal to zero. Therefore, all we need is the closed surface integral E dA cosine of zero degrees, and this is only for the side of the Gaussian surface. <clears throat> okay, we keep going from there, please. Good, so the electric field, closed surface integral, dA. And then dA equals um, the area of the side. Area of the side, good. And the area of the side is equal to? Um, pi r times pi length. 2 pi r times whatever length the Gaussian surface has. So yes, 2 pi r times the length, good. So now we have to deal with the right-hand side. <clears throat> On the right-hand side, we have what? What do we have on the right-hand side? Look. Q in is the Q. Q in is equal to what? Is that a positive Q? Ah, see, the big, big Q is not equal to the charge inside. Because one of the things that you need to realize what we're assuming is this is a long cylindrical conductor, right? And with a Gaussian surface, we're just taking a portion of that long cylindrical conductor. So this L for the length of our Gaussian surfaces does not equal the total length of the conductor. So what we need to assume is that L, the length of the Gaussian surface, is much, much smaller than the L, capital L, the length of the conductor itself. So the charge inside is not equal to big Q. So what do we need to do? We need to figure out what portion of big Q the charge inside is. <clears throat> you need to use lambda. Lambda, which is? Uh, the linear charge density. Linear charge density, which equals? Q over L. Q over L, or in our particular case, we're going to make it equal to Q on the inside divided by L, the length of the whole, uh, the length of the Gaussian surface. So the charge on the inside equals lambda times little l. Uh, Therefore, we get uh, we'll Q inside here divided by E naught. We get lambda times little l divided by E naught. Everyone brought little l, the length of the Gaussian surface, to the party. Cancel out that. Yeah, the electric field equals.
intervals. Now I divide it by 2 pi e naught times uh, r. <coughs> So uh, let's see, let's do that in terms of k. So 1 over 4 pi e naught times 2 <coughs> times lambda over r, or the electric field equals 2k lambda over r. So now we get to go backwards. If you recall, we were trying to figure out capacitance. We determined that we needed the electric potential difference in order to do so. In order to figure out the electric potential difference, we needed the electric field. So we come back to the electric potential difference, which is equal to uh, the negative integral of E dot dr from A to B. So we have negative integral A to B of 2k lambda over R dr. <coughs> Please take the integral for me with you. Integral 2k lambda are constant. Negative 2k lambda, I'm going to take that out. So we have the L integral of 1 over r. So Natural log of r from a to b. So we have then negative 2k lambda, natural log of b minus natural log of a. So we have negative 2k lambda, natural log of b divided by a. We now have <coughs> the electric potential difference. Finishing with capacitance. Capacitance is equal to charge over the electric potential difference. So charge, which is big Q, divided by <coughs> negative 2k lambda natural log of B over A. <coughs> Should we have big Q in our answer? Capacitance doesn't depend on the charge of the object. No. So we need to get rid of big Q. We come back to lambda equals big Q over L. So let's just do big Q equals lambda times um, times L, I guess we'll just do that. And so we do it up with, yeah, L. Okay, so we end up with capacitance equals Q, <coughs> lambda times big L divided by negative 2K lambda over natural log of B over A, which equals lambda divided by, uh, which equals uh, big L divided by negative 2K natural log of B over A. <coughs> And what's wrong with our answer? Does it uh, Well, I guess it's a question. Okay, let's start there, and then we'll, we'll come back to that. So can you have a negative capacitance class? No, no. Is the natural log of B over A positive or negative? Yeah. You actually know. You should know this, right? Natural log, which one's bigger, B or A? B. B. So the natural log of B over A, is that positive or negative? Positive. Therefore, where can we simply make it positive? Right now. Well, we should actually have it. We, keep, we should have a specific <coughs> line. What, where's, a, where's a point where we can do that? So there's no way that the rest of it is going to be negative. I don't understand that. There's no like, way that the rest of it's not going to be negative. I mean, if we need a positive capacitance and L over K L on the array, it's going to be positive. You could use the positive electric potential difference, right? Or you could use a negative charge, because you could use the charge from either plate. I'm going to use the negative charge just for fun, for more fun to me. So we end up with a positive. Still, you got a question? Are they going to say, like, what's out of your answer in terms of, because I would have bought the Q on top. Uh, you should never leave Q for the charge or well, for the capacitance of the conductor. Do they usually specify, like, what your answer is in terms of? I know they do that. They usually specify, yes. 